Hello, hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, welcome. I'm Bonnie, Old Soul Mermaid. And today we will be unboxing a Kickstarter deck that has recently found its way to me after I ordered it months ago. So if you're interested to see what deck this is, stick around. As you can see, I have taken the Moon Void Tarot 3rd edition out of its packaging and I try not to watch any walkthroughs of a deck that I know I'm going to be getting, you know, if it's a Kickstarter or pre-order deck because I want to experience it on my own. But I did watch an unboxing and one unboxing and it was Julie at Peekaboo Rose because I know this is one of her favorite decks. It's one of her soul decks and she has I believe the second edition and she did a side-by-side -side comparison of the cards of both editions. So I will link that um, in the description box below if you really want to see a side-by-side. -side. Now this deck is in pre-order status right now, this third edition, and I will also leave a link to that um, if you're interested after this walkthrough. I was very happy to back this edition even though I I must say I'm really attracted to, to the old edition or the second edition I believe is the one I have mostly seen on Julie's channel. And Julie has taken some of the cards and she's added her little pops of color. So that's another reason why I wanna direct you to her channel after you watch my video, all right? So it comes also with a full size guidebook. I don't remember what the earlier editions had, maybe a little pullout or pamphlet. I don't think they came with a extensive guidebook. So we'll take a look at this in just a moment. As you can see, it's now in a two piece hard box. Look how pretty that is. So there is 81 cards in this deck. And so there's a few extras, so I'm gonna be excited to look at this. Here are the gorgeous backs. And from what I recall from Julie's video, I think the backs have changed a little bit. Uh, as far as cardstock, this feels like a cross between a US Games and a Make Playing Cards cardstock, maybe a smooth, smooth, superior smooth. If you're familiar with Make Playing Cards cardstock, it's very nice and it should be easy to shuffle. And one thing that's different from the previous two editions is that this one is etched in sparkly silver or metallic silver. It's quite pretty. And it does seem like it's the nice, you know, a, a little bit higher quality than some, like it's not flaking off. So it should hold up. And with wear and tear, it should probably fade in nicely with the use and age of your deck. So from here, we're going to do a musical flip through so you can delve into the cards and then I will meet you on the other side. We're on a journey Looking back on the things that we've taken for granted But feels like we're learning To be better without what's been holding Straight to go on together 
dancing closely together and staying forever young. What about you and I then? Can we two find a way to align with each other? Let's move closer to a new history. Find out what we can be together. Mm. Take my hand and we will conquer the world. This is our final chance. Number 10. 
hope you enjoyed that musical flip through. I'm just going to flip through the cards as I talk. As you notice, this is a very female centric deck. Uh, not a lot of, there's no age diversity. Uh, there's no race diversity, but that's a given because if you've seen through the cards, it follows one person or one entity's journey. And um, so you're not going to get that. And I knew that going in. One thing that, see, and I love some, this deck follows the RWS system and it's a great deck to learn on if you're not drawn to the traditional RWS. Um, if you're a beginner and you're drawn to female energy decks, this is great. It, there's some very inventive ways, you know, and a reinvention of the cards, a depiction of the cards, but it still very much follows the RWS system. So yeah, if you're a beginner and you're drawn to this deck, have at it. Um, I think you'll have no problems reading with it. Um, again, no age diversity, but again, it follows just one person's uh, journey. And because, you know, I was flipping through this deck and it reminded me, just looking at the images, um, the energy is very young and youthful, obviously. And it reminds me when I was flipping through this of my daughter, my daughter who just turned 25 on the 23rd. Yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting old, but um, this, the image, this person in the deck reminds me very much of my daughter and some of the things that she's going through. And maybe that's why I'm drawn to this deck. I love how all the kings are depicted by a different crown. I think it's wonderful. Um, this cardstock while I'm touching it is quite nice. It's like a, a yeah, a cross, like I said before, make playing cards, US games, nice US games cardstock. It's really nice. I love the pops of pink. I think it's gorgeous. I think I'll be able to read with this deck, no problem. I really like the Six of Cups right here. And actually, I would love to have a set of mugs. <laughs> like uh, the ones that are depicted with the roses um, throughout the suit of cups. I really like it. Yeah, even this little outfit reminds me of something my daughter would wear. Now, I, I totally would wear these jeans, but I would have a longer top. <laughs> no bearing midriffs at my age. Very, very sweet. Ten of Cups. And, you know, even though this depicts a younger couple right here, um, this is where my husband and I are at right now and where I feel I had my children, but it's my husband are kind of back at a place where we were when we first met and when we were dating and we are closer than ever before because we don't have the um, extra responsibility of our children, the care for our children. And so this was us, you know, almost 32 years ago, and it's kind of come around full circle because this is kind of where we are now and kind of feel like newlyweds, kind of feel like we're dating again, kind of discovering, you know, where we are now in life, you know, with all that we've been through together. And I, I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> I, I really have a great husband. So, yeah, um, yeah, can be read by any ages. Uh, this pink, yeah, it's my jam, and I think it's wonderful. I do, though, now that I have this deck in hand, I really want to get <laughs> a, a, an older version, a second, the second version maybe, the second edition, um, just because that's how I roll. But I never, I, I check intermittently on eBay and I don't, uh, I haven't seen one yet. 
not to say that there haven't been any, but I think people really like this deck and don't, aren't willing to give it up. And I can see why. And I'm so glad I was able to get it. Yeah, I, I, I think this is a beautiful deck. Oh, look at that. The Nine of Pentacles. Love it. As far as shuffling, yeah, no problems. No problems whatsoever. For those of you who want to know, this is the exact same size as the yellow box uh, RWS deck by US Games. So why don't we take a look at this very, it seems expensive, guidebook. So it does have a bit of a table of contents. So elements and suits and tarot, getting to know your deck, archetypes and altar building, reading reversals, tarot spreads, new and full moon rituals. Here we are in tarot spreads. So there's, uh, she has two card spreads, this or that, keep or toss, avoid and embrace, etc. And she has examples of some questions. She has a three card tarot spread for anxiety. Why am I feeling anxious? What is my energy trying to tell me? How can I productively channel my anxious energy? She has a three card spread for decision making, a three card spread for relationship dynamics, a three card spread for general daily advice, and a three card spread for health, five card spread for shadow work, my goodness, five card spread for relationship, five card spread for calling in a relationship when you're looking to attract a partner, okay, five card tarot spread for handling conflict, that would be very useful. Five card spread for working with your inner child, a five card spread for manifesting, and a five card spread for career changes and clarity. So there are a lot of great spreads. Now let's see what kind of information is included. Let's see, we're in the Major Arcana for the Fool, so you get keywords, you get astrology, you get numerology, and a little description of the card and then you get a reversed meaning. So it's not just like keywords, there's like a description. So you do get keywords for the upright and then you get like a, a description, some paragraphs and then you get the reversed meaning of the card. Really, really good. Let's go into the minors and C. So you get a lot in the minors as well. You get the exact same amount of um, information as the keywords. Oh, you do get, okay, so instead of the numerology and um, astrology, you get the major arcana correspondences. So for instance, the Knight of Wands connects, all nines connect to the Hermit and you do get a reversed meaning. Now, as you noticed, when I flipped through the cards, there are three extra cards. So you get Rose Quartz and Black Diamond. And then, which I think is the most ingenious of all, is the planchette for the yes and no, if you really want a quick answer. I think, I wish more decks included that, just for an extra bit of fun. Um, I think it's a wonderful addition. I really wish more decks would include that. Or I might keep this, this, uh, card out on my altar and, um, just kind of use it whenever I feel the need to with any deck that I'm using. I think that's a wonderful addition. And on the 
back of the book, it says the Moon Void Tarot is named after the void of course moon, a moment of deep pause, a time where no action is to be taken, and reflection begins. The deck follows the journey of one single character and features genderless court cards. Each card represents energies we are being invited to embody, while the deck as through a journey of reflection. The Moon Void Tarot is handcrafted by magic practitioner and artist Stephanie Caponi. So just going through my decks, I pulled a few oracle cards just very quickly that I thought, you know, at first glance might uh, work well with the Moon Void Tarot, either because of color palette, aesthetic, energy. So let's see if these are a good match. The first oracle deck that I thought might match well with the Moon Void is the Sacred Self-Care Oracle by Jill Pyle. And this is a mass market deck that you can easily get off of Amazon, very economical, but I just thought because of the color palette and the fact that it's also female centric, um, this would probably be a very good pairing with it. And I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, yes, uh, this might be the first one that I try to pair with it. And I know many of you probably have the Sacred Self-Care deck in your collection. Yeah, I think this is uh, a really good match, as a matter of fact. The second deck that came to mind was the Awakened Soul Oracle by Ethany. Now, this is more minimalistic art in the tarot. And it, there's a little bit more um, detail in the Awakened Soul. But something I've read with this deck a lot, and just from the feeling I'm getting, I think it would very um, well pair with the Moon Void Tarot. Um, we'll see, you know, the proof is in the pudding, but uh, I think even though their art styles are very, very different, you know, sometimes opposites attract. And I think, um, this would also be a really good match. And that is the Awakened Soul Oracle by Ethany. Another great match, I think, for this deck would be one that has a little bit more abstract art, and that is the Vessel Oracle by Mary Elizabeth Evans. Um, I, oh wow, the color palette, the minimalism, just the simple keyword, I think it would be a really good match. Now, the Vessel Oracle is an indie deck, but it is on the economical side. Um, you can easily get it on Etsy. But I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what pairing I like better, this or the Self Care Oracle. Well, I'm just happy that I have right off the bat two Oracle decks that I could think of, at least, or actually three, um, that I could pair with this deck. But I'm really liking this one and the self-care. But I also think the Awakened Soul would work as well. And that is the Vessel Oracle by Mary Elizabeth Evans. Another fun pairing, I think, would be the Synchronicity cards by Kathy Nichols. Now, she also has her Story Cards deck, which is along the same art style, and I think that would work as well. I have both, and if you have either one of those decks, or these decks, uh, I think it would pair very, very well with the Moon Void Tarot. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What is your favorite pairing? Now, I like to use these almost like a Lenormand deck, you know, I pick three and they kind of tell a story, but you know, however you use uh, your Oracle decks, that's fine. But I find that's how I, I tend to use uh, both of Kathy Nichols decks. And I think this pairing would be a lot of fun. I really do. Um, maybe picking 
one of the tarot and then three of the oracle or uh, vice versa. But I think these would work well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And this is the Synchronicity deck by Kathy Nichols, but her Story Cards deck would also pair well. All right, that concludes my unboxing and walkthrough of the Moon Void Tarot 3rd Edition by Stephanie Capone. I'm really thrilled to finally have this deck in my collection. Let me know um, what your thoughts are. If you're feeling drawn to this deck, if you already have one of the earlier editions, I want to hear it all. Leave it in the comments below. And with that, I will leave you to get on with your beautiful day. Thanks for spending time with me. Bye for now.